The other day, a truck pulled up outside my house. Well, it's blue. It's definitely a car. It doesn't make much noise when it moves. This is the Nissan Leaf plug-in electric car. I'm very lucky. I've got this car on extended loan over the next few months, and I'm going to be using it a lot. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. This is a very experimental episode. I've just decided this morning when I was thinking about what I was doing today uh, that uh, I am in the process of doing crazy things in electric cars so other people don't have to. So today I am driving uh, this wonderful car that I've only just had a couple of days. This is the Nissan Leaf, uh, a comfortable five-door hatchback electric car. Uh, it's been charging overnight. It's uh, fully charged when I left this morning. I have driven 5.7 miles so far and the mileage indicator is giving me a reading of 93 miles of range. So it's a little bit, it's calculated a little bit under 100 miles. I am driving 58 miles for a very specific reason, really a very crucial part of the whole electric vehicle argument. Um, but that, that said, I'm quite nervous because I've never driven that far before and that is too far for me to get back home without recharging. So I will be recharging when I'm there and hoping that the whole project works successfully. All the roads I'm driving through are rolling rural roads. I'm not going through towns or cities. Uh, so it's quite a long journey where your average speed is going to be much higher than it would be in a city environment. Just switching on the cruise control now. I'm in eco driving mode to maximize the range. Uh, and as you can see, I'm, I'm glancing down. So I, I'll admit it at the moment, I am having range anxiety. Uh, but interestingly, because we're now going slightly downhill, my range has gone up uh, and is constantly going up. So probably by the time I get this, it's quite a big hill I've got to go down. And this is the very complicated thing with this particular car, which I'm not used to. And that is that the range constantly varies. So if you're going down a long hill, even if you've only got like 80 miles at the top of the hill, by the time you get to the bottom, it says 102. So then you feel, oh, no trouble. Then you go up a hill and it drops down to 70. Instantly, really quickly. And then you go along a flat bit and it goes up to 85. So you can't really judge your overall distance on that. And in fact, you just don't want to look at it because now we've now done seven miles and it's gone up to 95 miles range. So it's actually gone up since I've been speaking. That said, the car itself is really nice to drive. It's a really comfortable, smooth drive. It's, the road holding is really good. It's really solid car. It sticks to the road beautifully. All the weight of the car is right down low. It's all about axle height because the battery pack and everything is very, very low. So um, this car is really, is really the, without question, the most sophisticated electric car I've ever driven. And uh, I'll be honest, I've driven a few. I mean, just in terms of its uh, driver feedback, its control systems, the, the ride, the handling, the smoothness of operation, it is absolutely at the cutting edge. Uh, you know, it's way above what you'd expect for a, a small hatchback car. And everything about it encourages you to, to, to drive as economically as possible, to use the least amount of energy as possible to get you to where you're going which is really what it's all about. It's really not about pollution and CO2 output and, and climate change. It's about efficient use of energy. Our economy is an energy economy and we have been completely used to, for the last 200 plus years, completely used to cheap, abundant energy. And I really believe, and I think you don't have to believe, you can just look around you and see that that era is coming to a close. And that doesn't necessarily have to mean that our entire culture and economy has to grind to a miserable halt and recreate an apocalyptic movie made by some Hollywood stoner. What it really is saying is we need to use energy much more efficiently. And I truly believe, and my experience has taught me that this is true, that a vehicle like this is just more energy efficient than a vehicle like that. A two and a half ton Land Rover Discovery with a diesel engine. 
is not an efficient use of energy. It's as simple as that. One of the tempting things about this car, and one of the reasons that a lot of uh, motoring journalists have hammered them because, and then said, oh, the range isn't very good. If you drive this car hard, it's really fun. There's the throttle has a thing where you push it all the way down and you feel it sort of stop and you think that's the end of it. Uh, if you push a little bit harder, it goes boom, and it's like a turbo and this thing really rockets along. It goes really, really fast. So for like over a short distance, if you know you're doing 20 miles just down the shops and back, you can drive like a nutter because it'll, I mean, well, you know, I'm saying the range will reduce, doesn't reduce to 20 miles, but you know, you're going to reduce the potential 100 mile range quite considerably doing that. But boy, is it fun. This car is wicked fast if you want it to go like that. I am driving it wicked slow today, simply because I've got a long way to go. And that kind of calculation isn't some sort of massive restriction on my basic white male human right to drive the way I want, at the time I want, anywhere I want to go. A little bit of an update on the journey, a uh, little bit of a pain. The route that I had planned for today well, it was 59 miles and 59.6 miles or something. And I knew the route, so then I'm tootling along quite happily. Now I see big red signs that say road closed. That has added, I would say, 15 miles to my journey. Anyway, here's the latest update on the mileage. I've done 37 miles and I'm reading that I have 55 miles left. Now, I bet you're much better at maths than I am, but I think that's less than 100, isn't it? 55 and 37 is um, 65, 75, 85, 92. So that, it sort of adjusted its range constantly. Well, I'm very near the end of my journey now. I'm hoping that I'm very, very close. It says I'm 1.9 miles away from my destination. I've got 17 miles left of battery range, so I'm all right. But as you can tell, that's gone, that's, that's 17 and 65 do not make 100. Um, so, let's pull out onto here. Where do I go now? <laughs> I'm here. So the reason for my journey today was to drive to Somerset. I'm in Somerset now and it's all lovely and rural and bucolic and blissful and there's cows eating the cud over there. But there, that building there, might look like a house to you. It's actually a mill. It's an old water mill. It would have used to grind corn or, or do things to clothes and make weaving stuff happen. Anyway, hundreds of years ago, and then it burnt down about 120 years ago. And now it's been rebuilt by an amazing couple who've turned it into a micro generation unit. It's a hydro micro generation unit. So there's the river that runs down that way, but then they've got a leet, which is a very old Saxon word, I expect, that runs down that side and powers their turbine. It's a German turbine and they fitted it into the ground and it's an amazingly beautiful thing and it goes 24 hours a day and it generates electricity. And they've told me some very simple figures because they've understood that I'm not good at maths. And so they explained it to me very simply that one cubic metre of water drops one metre down their turbine shaft and generates one kilowatt of electricity. But actually they have about four cubic metres a second dropping through there, which sounds like a lot. And that generates obviously a lot of electricity and in fact the Nissan Leaf is plugged in to their electricity and they produce enough electricity from their turbine to recharge 24 kilowatt hours in about 20 minutes. So I am now currently charging the Nissan Leaf on genuinely, totally, 100% carbon zero electricity. The only thing that is being used to generate the power is that river that's running there. It is possible. If there was oil under the ground here and they wanted to drill an oil well and extract the oil and build a refinery, so they could produce their own gasoline. They're not really going to do it, are they? Let's be honest. But they can, this is my argument, they can produce their own electricity. Not only here, but in loads of places all over the UK. The organisation that they're involved with have estimated that they could, we could produce enough electricity from all the rivers in the UK to power two million homes. That's quite a lot of electricity, I think. So I'm very pleased to have come down here. I'm very pleased that it's taken quite a while to look round their beautiful mill so that I can recharge my car. <laughs> but it's ready now and I'm off. Well, that was a very, very successful day. I am now driving an electric car that is 100% guaranteed, no doubt about it, absolutely carbon zero. No carbon. It used rainwater running off the hills of Somerset. Driving a turbine and generating the power, I think that's really important because not, it's not very likely, it's not going to happen all the time, it's not going to be common. It's still in its very early stages, but it is possible. I'm driving a large mass manufactured heavy industry vehicle along a road in England 
and nothing is coming out of the tailpipe at present for the next 93 miles is just the tops. I am so proud to be in a position to be able to drive this car now where I know that no carbon was released in the production of the fuel that's driving this car along. It's an absolute privilege. The lovely people at that mill who were so kind to me, who gave me tea and cake while my car was charging. The car is now fully charged, it's fantastic. I'm driving back home, I'm a bit knackered because we did a lot of talking, but it was really, really brilliant, really interesting, great day. So that's all, please join me again on Fully Charged next time.